presentation was with the Marine Sciences Institute, MSI UP. At the time, ang pangalan lang was Reach to Reef Resource Management. Uh, and it's the concept has really emerged because of the influence of part of the uh, worsening climate change. So, baka dito next week, may Peter na lang na wala nang basa ng restaurante. Anyway po, uh, so what I'll do with these slides, um, I'm just going to give you a big picture. A lot of it is really, you have to digest a lot of this concept on your own, because I'm going fast through the, some of these slides. Uh, it has partly, uh, what I did for the, for the presentation is I tried to integrate about 10 to 15 years of engagement with several projects and with several donors, mainly with the DNR, local government units, and the private sector in many ways. So if you fall asleep, don't feel guilty. The second presentation, I just felt that I have to change it, integrated landscape restoration. Of course, I'm focused on that in Kovac ecosystem, although there are many, many ecosystems within the landscape. Okay, so I just put in the slides. Pinokya ko lang mo yung major manual na lobas. So far, this is probably the most comprehensive. Nalabas ko na. I think ito lobas, this was practically with the help of WRI. I use CN and several indices. Okay, mo bang boses? Pasensya na po kayo. Super senior na po eh. So, now we've been discussing a lot of restoration, rehabilitation, protection for many, many years. Di po ba? This is not a new concept. But, alam po nyo, we hear stories of Nagtanim na sono, next year another program, nagtanim na sono ulit. You know how much money have we spent now in GP? As of last year, we have spent about 52 billion pesos. Over the last 10 years. Now, we can't see the impact yet on the ground, it's a little bit but we can only probably see the impact in matter of over the years. With the dose investments, if you went to the right place, whether they would really contribute to people's sense of services. But, you know, we can always start. Maybe we pay. Starting kaya dito, kinukya ko lang yung title ng, I don't know if you have heard this book, yung title ng book ay when. We can, you know, starting right, starting again, and hopefully this time, starting together. Hindi ba niya kanya? Okay po? Hello? Sige, bumisik na tayo. So, Ito, binigyan ko kayo ng ilipid of your last concept. Ito yung mga aking storyline. Let's start first with definitions and principles. And then let's ask ourselves, why landscape? Why not the other way around? Bakit? I mean, have you ever asked yourself? We don't start with what, we always start with why. Why would I do this? Where? So, where and why, who, with whom, and for whom, kami luba sa ating program, sa local government, for whom are we doing a lot of these things, these things and why, and how much. Because I could do it for one peso, you can do it probably in 100 pesos. So, and then, Hopefully at the end of the slides, you know, I can show you how do we start. Okay, so, ito po yung ating Philippine landscape. Pasayin yung definition, that's basically the CBD definition. I'm not going to discuss, it's too conceptual, too abstract, you know, getting a genius area composed of faster interacting ecosystems 
Don't worry about your sizes. Unless you have gone to college or maybe advanced college, you have a hard time understanding that. Okay? But if you look at the Philippines, there are two major landscapes that we can see. Tignan na namin yung picture. Ano? We have basins. We have 20 paper basins in the country. And many sub basins, we have 143 major water sets and many catchments. That's one major landscape that we should see. Now, we're not in the reefs to reef. You know, from the Christian all the way to the coastal. 70% of the total area of the Philippines is within the water set. And then, when you, you, whether you like it or not, you are within a water set or a catchment or a basin. So, ang ibig sabihin, ang pag-basin ang ibig sabihin, pag-umulan, what's gonna happen to you? What's going to happen to you? You know? So, you can just imagine a lot of this Things that's going to happen within the basin. That's one. What? Well, it's a pang landscape that in I. We are, you know, we are considered to be one of the 17 mega diverse country in the world, right? And yet we are a spot. And you want to consider a lot of this that biodiversity are all found within the same water set, right? Asa la pas pa yung biodiversity? Hello. Nasa loob din ng water sets na yan, ng mga basins na yan, ng islands. And they are biophysically defined. Biophysically defined because, you know, given sa islands. Pababago pa bang baon din ng islands? Pasabogin mo yung book, pasabogin mo siya ang ano. Pababago, giniit, o sisig. Basins, basins, it's all determined by the, you know, by the, Race to reef, uh, where the divides, wetlands, coastal, biodiversity corridors, biodiversity corridors is much more difficult to eliminate. Oh, you need high level of training to be able to do that. Uh, of course, this is once legally defined. A geo, the bar, marijuana given definition, protected area, marijuana given tedious technical descriptions. You can't get away with those technical descriptions. Although, no one has a name, it's a magic magic and it's a magic and it's a magic and it's a magic. So, anyway, those are the two major landscapes that we have to deal with in the Philippines. Whether you like it or not, those are givens. So, imagine you, whether it's an AGO, my water is inside GEO, right? My biodiversity is inside GEO. Tanggal mo ba? Natanggal ba yung bawat isa doon? Hindi, right? Kung meron kang biophysically defined, mayroon din yung geo, mayroon din water set. Mayroon din biodiversity. You are in the same landscape. So that's one of the things that you have to understand in this case. And the thing is, almost 60% of our population nasa coastal marine. Nandun sila sa sink. Naintindihan mo yung ibig sabihin nun? Pakulan, sinong unong sinong tatamahan? Coastal community, 60% of the 110 million Filipinos are in coastal. I don't know if that's really sinking. In this group. Okay. Now, we're dealing with land and forest degradation. So, ano bang ibig sabihin? So, alam niyo landscape, that degrade your landscape. Isa lang ang indication ng nag-decrate ang landscape. It's really the decline in the provision of ecosystems, goods, and services that we all enjoy. Kung wala ka ng tubig, wala ka na ng supply ng kamoy, wala ka na ng supply ng land timber, wala ka na ng supply ng buffering, pollination, the ecosystems, goods, and services of that landscape has started to Yung po. And it's all the attributed to the changes in the land cover and land use within the landscape. Whether impacted by climate change or death, or human induced activities on the ground. So 
reduction of reforms capacity to provide ecosystem goods and services in coastal, Ganundin, you know, so simple lang yun. So ang restoration, simple, the opposite of the degradation. Any intentional activity of the stakeholders to put back the balance yung dating capacity ng system. That's you know, common sense. Diba? Because a stable ecosystem has the ability to bounce back when the disaster happens. That's how na dyan, resiliency. So, nagkakaman ang model, if the system, if the ecosystem is stable, don't worry about it, it will come back in just a matter of two years. Pero kung degraded na, what na yun? Diba? Awanan, mga dati yung ano. Okay, so, and that you can see, you know, it's usually medium malabo ito, wala akong kita ng picture. But that's basically, that's the, that's the landscape restoration. Overall picture, you look at the whole other water set, by fiscally defined or legally defined. Okay. Ay, ito pa, blah, blah, blah pa. So, nandun din eh. An active process that brings together all sectors together, negotiate, identify. Again, the major, there's one more word that was commented there. Decline, restore, you have to balance what? The use of ecosystems, goods and services within the last thing, and the protection, rehabilitation, and regulation on the other side. That's the challenge of governance. So, what is landscape preservation? Um, is key sectors and stakeholders jointly plan, design, and manage the land uses, the manage the land uses, and eh? in a given area based on its key biophysical features and policies that govern environment and natural resources. Two, Diyan na, yung mga gusto natin yung nangyari sa buong mundo ito. So, may provision, complementary investments, parang din masayang, resiliency, etc., etc. Okay? Agree pa ba kayang nung doon? O, sabi na lang, oo daw, hindi nangyitin diyan. <laughs> nangyitin diyan. Okay, good. Now, uh, Ito ang major challenge kasi we have now the key player climate change. Wala tayong control sa changes in the weather conditions, di ba? Unless it goes ka. Uh, so, ito ngayon, all of you, whether you like it or not, mas kinasinong NGO, mas kinasinong agency, your part and player in a shared landscape. City naman, barangay, NGO, private sector, you are part of this shared landscape, whether it's a one percent or politically highly. So, you allow depletion, siba, when you use mining ka, or gamit ka na. Anong kasot ka? Depletion, contamination, right? You know? Let's, let's accept it it's as it is. But we allow it because we should have to be but we would like to balance sana with regulation, enforcement, protection, restoration, conservation, and sound management. But how do you balance it? Because in the end, you would like to ensure that the value of that ecosystem, the capacity of that system to provide ecosystems, goods, and services will not decline, right? That's the challenge of the end, dapat ang big picture. If you see a landscape, you've got to say, okay, I want to ensure that the, the value of that ecosystem goods and services are either maintain, may improve over time. So whether you are NGO, ENR, PCSD, province, I don't think Magawi Awe is objective line. Walang itat, may pag-ICIP pa dito. 
Ang desired land use, land cover dapat ay matanda, may vegetation. Current land cover, bahay, resorts, buildings. So there's really a big gap. So, katulad yan, if you look at this one, ano ang land use nito? Hello? Ano ang land cover pala? Ano ito? Grassland. Okay, grasslands. Ito, land cover yan. Ano yung isa? Mangrove. Ah, ito. Ano yung isa? Mangrove. Grasslands and walls. So that's basically what you say. On the other hand, ano ang land use? Agriculture. Maybe ito may pastoral ka. Maybe ito mayroong kang agroforestry farm. Plantations. Kainin. What have you? So, now, we guys should be able to properly assign a land use for a given area and a given landscape. That's why simply on ordinance or a policy. They would declare protected area by legislation or proclamation. That's a policy designated land use, conservation land use po yan. But we have to invest a lot to put the right land cover in every land use. Either restoration, enforcement, regulation, panahonay, IEC, what have you. Madali magpaman ng land use, madali magpalit ng land use, but it is not easy to put back the right land cover if the land cover in that designated land use has been totally destroyed. You can like your land use ka, mining land use, industrial land use. Simply, pag open pit mining yan, ano mangyari? Natural force cover to? What? Bear na lang. Baka ano pa, bear, rocks. Now, how much will it take for you to restore the one hectare of mining area? You know how much? We trade it under the World Bank and it will cost you at least vegetative restoration and engineering measure at least 300 to 500,000 pesos per hectare. Hindi pa kasama yung pagtatanggal ng mga matanggal ng nasira sa tubig, nasira sa lupa, nasira ng livelihood, yung, yung benefit transfer cost. So anyway, so if you look at the last column, yung ating bansa, if you look at the country's cover, Cover yan ha, because land cover indicates productivity. At least you're looking at 25% of the national area of the Philippines. Public lands ay until lahat yung degradation siya. Unproductive. So laking challenge. That's why we guys, tumadaming Pilipino, pero kumihirap yung buhay. Kasi ka, hindi naman lumalaki yung Pilipinas. So yan, yeah, that's just an example of... Uh, pero isa pang principle ito na before we start the, 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 yung ating identification. In a landscape kasi, ang tawag natin, there are three eyes. Some of you have seen these slides. Ano yung three eyes? Tatlong mata. All ecosystems, there is interconnectedness of ecosystems, policies, and so on within the landscape. From the top of the race all the way to Pagkumulan sa mountain tubing. Pukot na pa doon sa bundok? Di ba yung mabuta sa lagad? Di ba? There is also interdependence of various ecosystems and functions. That means to say, Pagkain, food chain alone will give you an idea. Coordination will give you an idea. And then there's also an intergenerational impacts. So, yeah. 
whatever you do now, maybe in 2022, if you look back like say 2030, may impact yung binaw natin. Kung nakukusa tayo ngayon ng kunting restoration, I'm sure it will have effect in 13 to 20 years. Okay? Huwag nga sabihin, walang kwenta. Kung talang tamang gawin nyo, may, may, may resulta. There's also the principle of biodiversity. The more complex the system, the more diverse, the more resilient. Tandaan po niya, kung lahat yan ay almasiga, wala na. Alam niyo nangyari nyo sa Sindong Bagyo sa, di ba? Naalala niyo Sindong Bagyo, Sindong, Pindanao? Tumama dito sa, saan tumama? Dabao Oriental, di ba? Hindi ko talagang picture, tamama ng Oriental. If you look at the province of Dabao Oriental, what is the dominant land use in Dabao Oriental at Sala Dabao Oriental? Dominant land? Plantations of banana plantations. Kaya nung makasabang yun, good luck sa yung banana. Lahat sila. Kasi isa lang ba nung isang species lang eh. So, okay, now, isa pang definition na, climate and climate change. I hope nangitindihan nyo ito, ito ko, climate, ano yung sabihin ng climate? Sino dito ang nag-aaral ng meteorology? Ano yung sabihin ng climate? Climate ay ano, is the composite or generally prevailing weather of the region. Tatlo ka pa ang major component, temperature, may net, Ano ang tatik? Hey, 36, 37. Yun, laging na yung portion. Air pressure. Nalalaman lang natin na pag may bagyo. Di ba? May storm, may typhoon. Humidity. Pagdating ng June, July. Di ba? Pag panang pag-iwisan ka, hindi lumalabas yung pawis. That's high relative humidity. Precipitation. Ano ibig sabihin ng precipitation? Ano ba ka na ulan? So, sunshine. Agriculture. Kasi kung may iksi yung sunshine, wala kang ano. Kung walang sunshine, ano? What are we going to lose? Ready to give na lahat? Ano ibig sabihin? Wala kayong photosynthesis, you don't produce anything. Diba? Carbon production, that means you produce you. you know. Cloudiness, of course, yan. Magkakalutso yan, please. So, ano ang climate change? Climate change is any changes in the different climatic ano, features. Matakas ang ulan, mainit, drought. Makakas ang hangin. It's a combination of all of this. That's why it's erratic weather conditions. It's worsening over the years. We have more typhoons. Un unpredictable yung rainfall. Pati yung location and so on. So that's when you say, ang ibig sabi ng climate change? Climate change is changing. The different factors are changing because of human-induced land uses. That, you know, that can put the day over the atmosphere. So, tanda po nyo yun. Ang medyo damaging sa atin ay drought at saka baha, landslide, flooding, loss of vegetation, damaging land use, and so on and so forth. So, pagdating sa climate change, isa ang medyo natatamaan. Ano yun? Tubig. Water is the primary a medium which climate change influences the ecosystems. Tanda, isa lamang ang medium na tatamaan. Pag umulan, of course, maraming sisirain yan. Pero it will damage the water supply in the system, eventually cycling back to other factors. So you want to ensure that you want to have the capacity to be resilient pagdating ng climate change. Kasi malaking baha, 
Sisirain yung bahay mo, di ba? Malakas ang hangin, ano? Oh, walang ka ng tanin. So, it's all because of the hydrological cycle. So, ano yun, no? Yan, ang world index ng, world risk index ng Philippines. We are now number one dito sa, parang exposure. We're the top. Number one in the, in the risk, highest exposure for the damage of climate change. Worldwide. I am not joking here about climate change. Ano? Nandiyan na sa figure. Hindi mo ba sa masyad ng mga maliit eh? Ay, tuloy. Hindi ako ng COVID. Ay, warm water ano? Ay, nga ako ano? <coughs> Sorry ha. <coughs> so, why? Ang tanong, bakit umunahin mong forest? Of course, alam natin na ang forest ko no ay maraming benefits. So, I'm not going to isa-isa. We start with forest because ang daming ecosystems, foods, and services that depend on the forest ecosystem. Una, yan. Agriculture, because of pollination. Agriculture, pati coastal and marine productivity, they're all dependent sa uh, forest ecosystems. Pati ang fisheries. Kasi lalo-lalo tayo ang restory. So that's the reason why we're starting with the focus. This one also. So, ito, blah, blah, blah lang yan. Magandang idea, climate change, ito, restoration, landscape, integ ano, integrated, I, three eyes, interconnect. So what? How do we put all these different, magagandang pinabisip pa ng mga technocrats, magandang magaling mag-isip, lot of concepts, to be translated to beautiful ideas into something that's tangible, actionable, that is about the GU. Unless we're able to translate these beautiful abstract ideas into something that will matter to the communities, to the LGUs, to the fish folks, it won't matter. So, Papas lang uli ang profes ng another word na, sa another IRR, kaya GUs lang din. DNR, pasko din ang panagawa ng NGP. Another 52 billion pesos. Oh. In the meantime, we're all paying taxes, right? Okay, so. So, how do we translate? Lalo-lalo na sa Palawan. Nandito kayo, I presume that all of you are very, very interested, right? O kasi tinawag lang kayo ng, ng mga organizers. Sabi niyo, oh, punta kayo doon, mamasyal sa kwela to. Eh, hindi naman yun talagang we mean what we say and say what we mean. Huwag mo nagbibigaw lang daw si si kasi ano mo, Miss Caceres. Joking lang daw. Okay, itong Palawan. Ang question niya is, how do we determine, first step to determine what last shapes under locations are in the uh, Palawan na ito. First step lang, saan ba? Anong landscape pa? Pinpoint the key landscape using biophysical, blah, blah, blah. No. Yung shared landscape, alam mo ba, ang shared landscape ay, yun, know, nandyan, Then I find. And uh, ito, yung, ito yung mga potential shared landscape nyo. Hindi ko alam yung iba pa. You have to define them. This is just the map that came out from UCID Protect Wildlife when I was still involved with that project. And then, ang number three is, ano ba ang ecosystem foods and services that the different stakeholders enjoy collectively? Major ha, sa Palawan kasi, ito yung mga major yung ecosystems for social services. Timber, di ba? Sino nagpatay ng bahay ng maganda? 
Ha? Sabi ko muna ng tao eh. Lalo ba si Minto? Or Black? <laughs> Hindi, di ba? You still take paper whether you are a province with Lakban or not one. Either you import it sa or you store it somewhere one way or another. Okay? So, many years. Sino na yung nawala ng palawa ni Sayon Mineralize? Dami ang mining. If you look at the mineral map, ang Palawan is highly mineralized province. Tanong yung MGB. Kaya may taga MGB pa dito? Okay. Nickel. Ba? Ano pa yung pinagamit na baso? Minerals. Would you like it or not? Well, to deal with our ecosystem goods and services. By hope or by hope. May palaman tignan natin. Water from Axbet on water sets. Tubig is number one. Lumal lumalaki ang population ng Puerto. Lahat ng mga emerging municipalities and province na ito. Saan sila pupunan ng tubig? Surface water, underground water. Tandaan nyo, all of these are limited. Tubig, kung walang ulan, wala ka tubig. Punta ka sa dagat, convert mo yung soft water yung tubo. Potable water. Salination. Ano pa yung sack? Fisheries. Yun yung apat ng major ecosystem goods and services to me. You can add more. Ang talagang mahalagang is ES ng Palawan. And you may start with those major. If I ask, if I'm going to ask a one of the NGOs, for instance, this is a El Nido, San El Nido. If you look at El Nido, ano ang dominant economy ng NGO? What is the what is the ecosystem service that really provides you the income? Tourism. Ay, may nakalimutan pa lang ako dyan isa. Alam mo yung anong nakalimutan mo isa? Hindi. That's not ecosystem schools and services. You need natural and cultural locations. Sorry, tagas na lang. Ay, ito pala! Ito pala! Kala ko nakalimutan mo. Recreation from unique. Natural and cultural structures, islands, and landscapes. So, one, two, three, four, five. Bawanan natin. Ay, mayroon pa. Habitats. Ayan, because of the ecosystem services. So, pero pag ano kasi, pag magandang ecosystem, pati habitats, mga ecosystem species na kikinatang din. Hindi lang tayo. And then, yun, creating services. Pulitation, buffering, and so on. So, ang dami pa ka. So, ayan. We sinubukan namin imamatayan for the wildlife. Kasi, if you look at the key economic activities of Palawan, ano? Ang nagbibigay ng anak buhay, kita ng private sector, ano lang, ecotourism, Fishing, agriculture, mining. Ibon, mining number one. Ha? Depende kung ano location nyo. Pero you look at these four major economic, ano yung mga, ano yung mga ating economic subsector? What are the four major, what are the economic subsector in this NGO? Alam nyo? Bawat NGO? Anong economic subsectors nyo? Hindi nyo alam ko anong what really drives your NGO, what, what economic subsector sectors drive the economy of your NGO. Oh, meron tayo, forestry, agriculture, di ba? Livestock. Trade, and commerce, ano ba? Industries, ano ba? Hello? Tourism. Five major economic subsectors. 
So you are either dependent on agriculture, like crops, livestock, or fisheries. Forest, wala nang forest ka dito. Very minimal na. Mining, malaki, industrial, industrial sector. Tourism, malaki. Diba? Trade and commerce, tumadami kasi na tumadami ng turista. Rural activities. So if you ask yourself, if you ask your neighbor, if I ask my NGO, tignan nyo yung profile ng, ng NGO, tignan yung municipal profile, tignan nyo yung employment, sources of income ng mga tao. Makikita nyo kung ano ang dominant na, ano, dominant na economic subject. If you look at for princess, uh, what is your economic, what is your dominant economic subject? Price. Kasi, yun ang banta yan. Saan galing? So, you can link the economic subsectors with the, with the ecosystems or landscape that provide the, the necessary ecosystems to services. Okay. So, yan na. Ay, mako na. So, ang number two is step. step. Hindi ko naayos na may kaya yung ano. Kalo. Kasi bago yung start yan. Uh, PCC, siguro natin yung tal PCC. Umpisan yung gawa ng TWG. Hindi ko na kaya, no? At the provincial level. And do, as a result of this workshop, may i-identify nyo. I'm sure may lalabas na. Tignan nyo anong mga shared landscape. Kaso, Sa landscape analysis kasi, we're dealing with the givens. Maliwanag ang susel ang landscape ano, tignan yung givens. Ano ba ang biophysical mo? Mababa. Hindi nga, givens kasi yan, kasi constant, mayroon pag-uwin. No? Unless Diyos ka, o oh, you're a very influential lawmaker. So, gaya geophysical features, tignan nyo po anong what are those features that are affecting your landscape, that are family landscape? Policies is statutory, customary, including ano yung ESG? Yeah. I think I don't know ESG. Early ESG, I think. <laughs> ESG is Environment, Social, Governance, Safeguards. Okay? What are the ESG safeguards that should be in place in that landscape? To ensure, di ba, maraming challenge, balance, di ba? Balancing use at saka protection. Kung hindi maluwanag ang environmental, social, governance safeguards nyo, you are in a very dangerous position. Kasi everything else is not negotiable. So, ano yung major natural resources nyo? Dagat, forest, unit. Aha, local climate. Madali po ano nyo, kasi hindi ko sa Palawan, I think kung hindi ko mag-ibayat ang climate sa north at sa sa south eh. So, tignan nyo yun. May higing nga ng pag-aasamay, meron na silang, ang tawag na doon, may look at the map. You can, mayroon silang system na look at the nila more or less mayroon silang estimate ng local climate eh. I-advocate ko yung mga polyboros lang. Anong tawag mo na doon? Kalimutan mo na eh. Baka nila pakaralan ng mga GIS. And then demography. Depends na yan. At least funny sa inyo yung mga tao. So, you determine this one. What are the givens in that landscape? Hello? So, of course, ako yung shared landscape nyo, tignan nyo yung ibabay, tignan nyo yung connectedness, interdependence, impact, and then yung end up with <coughs> ano ba yung pinapakinataan kong yung distance with sensors. Kasi kung di maliwanag ito, suntok kayo ng suntok, hindi nyo alam kung tatama. Ang naitignan nyo ngayon, 
Meron bang policy designated land use kung sa area? Meron bang maliwala na safeguards? Kung wala, what can be the immediate thing na yung hangon? And then, tingnan nyo yung advantage. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng advantage? If I ask, if I ask the LDA to West, what is really your comparative advantage as an as a, as a recreation, as, a, as, a, as an equal-to-based area? Compare, ano ba, El Nido, compared to underground river, compared to Honda Bay, compared to San Vicente, ano ba yung isang mga pinapuntaan niya? Ay? Koron. So, you have to be able to identify your comparative advantage and opportunities within your landscape. And then, ano ang threats and challenges? Vulnerability to climate and human. Kasi ito, hindi mo na mo dadalo, di ba? Hello? Ito, events na siya. Pero ito, to be able to ensure that this is, this force, this stock will continue to lay eggs. Ay, mababago mo ang land use, di ba? Mababago mo ang cover. Ma-address yung pantay advantage of your comparative advantage, you can seize opportunities, you can address challenges, you can also reduce your vulnerability to climate change. So these are the things that you can do. These are the things that you can hardly do in it to make it sure. And then dahil po nyo, this is very important for sa landscape analysis. You, I want na identify nyo yung site. Ito yung aming shared landscape. You know what are the ecosystem services that provide collective benefits. Alam nyo yung situation ng land use, whether there's policy designated, meron bang bawat square hectares pa yan ng lupa at sa kadarat may land use, may land and water use, may solid ba na maliwala, may ordinansa, may policy ba, DNR. Anong advantage if I protect that one? Bakit? Anong limitations? Anong vulnerability? So, ito ang first assignment. Unless maliwanag sa inyo yun, mayroon ka kayo mag-identify. Mag-identify kayo ng site saan yung ilalagay ang inyong 2 million pesos, mas kinasaan. Okay. Hello? Hindi uh, inig ko ba kayo? Okay, nansak na kayo, patulad ko. So, so tanda nyo, these are the things that you can do at your level. The TO, DNR, PCSD, Robins. These are the things na you can you can probably think around that. You know, nice. Kasi, dapat maluwanag din sa inyo. Ano yung sino makikinabang? Who will benefit? There, this is a list of guys who will benefit. The ecosystem itself will benefit kasi diba, the more diverse, the more resilient, the more, you know, stable. Communities under their lives. Tuloy-tuloy ang pangingisda ng mga tao. No? Enterprises, kung local water district ka, kung resort ka, makikinatong ka. Businesses, kung ongoing concern ka na, pwede ka mag-expand. Hindi ka muna mag-pull out. Public and private service providers, ang dami. Sa underground labor na lang, ilan ang sasakyan, transport providers. On the bay, ilan yung yung bang-bang ka? Ang dami mo na kinalang, di ba? Pagpulyote na on the bay at mabaho na, may pupunta pa ba? So, and if you translate all of that, of course, to do the right thing, the right place at the right time, with the right people, 
Then you will improve the ecosystem resiliency. And also sustainability of climate change. Improve or sustain incomes, profits, and stability for the private sector. There will be more money into the public funds. Okay, everybody benefits, everybody happy. You know? Yeah. So, and then of course, and go national government, provincial government. Oh, GDP of Palawan improves. Wow. Elect me as the governor. Check. <laughs> oh, mayor. Check then. So, and we contribute to the sustainable development goal of the United Nations economy. DG 613. And, of course, the major challenge is what? All the while, you have to put in the cross-cutting governance and resource management system, ESG, Environment, Social and Governance Safeguards to my quantitative role. Also, yun po yung big picture. Hello? Pag hindi maliwanan ito, sa pag-identify nyo ng restoration sites, uh, you come up later. You just, you know, can't come. You're not completely I hope maliwala po yan. Kung di na hindi naman, maybe you can open up for open book. Ito lang, I'm just showing you because this has been the result of the study. Maybe this has changed because this is still 2002. They have looked at the de development organizations worldwide. But I was still with the World Bank. And, um, maybe this has changed, but this is just an indication. The, what are the most important in the social and rural development. Ang pinakamahalaga talaga. Alam nyo po, ano? Municipality. Hello? Ministries. DNR. DA. PIPAR. So on. Transport. Private enterprise. Ano pa? Ano yung CBOs? Community, uh, community based organizations. Religious groups. Simbahan. Family, support system, local leader, mga champion champion. Uh, kapila, of course, health is critical, education is critical. Police, questionable. Pero yan, those are the most important institutions for the Insurable Development. And then, most important, eh? you know, I'm going to the next slide. Those are the most important. So all of you guys are very, very important. So that is a restoration. But generally, these institutions are also the most ineffective. Yeah. Isa lang ang indication niya that we should say, yung sabi ko nga niya, so that, you know, revolution, more empowerment, capacity building, etc., etc., you can more than the way. Okay? So, hindi ko na ulit yan, baka pag-intin pa, baka din ako pa. Okay, so, so, ang gagawin, Kung mamimili kayo ng landscape, ito yung mga suggested kayo ito kayo lang. Mamimili kayo ng isang landscape na within na share ng several regions. I think it's tatlo lang. What are the three most valuable ecosystems, goods, and services that all of you are benefiting? Is it water? Is it recreation? Is it agriculture? Is it mineral? Uh, then you need to identify the weather. See, water says that it should be it's a legal boundary. And then, you know, you go to the process. Assess, put up some spatial mapping. Getting all the secondary data you can get. Discuss the IEC is important. Pero yung IEC nyo, dapat may explain nyo na may ito. 
may maintain bago kayo patay easy yung analysis yung maliwanag di ba hello at iyon dapat ang mensahe nyo guys communities kailan magsama-sama tayo because our lives depend on this yun ang selling point nyo if you don't do anything good luck we'll be back waiting here 10 years from now Kung hindi pa liwanag ito, pag putin nyo sa consultation, sa meeting, ay kasi blam 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 lang kayo sa mga. So, maliwanag po ba yun? Yes. And then, yun know, o, kahit ang bagumpisa ka lang sa 100 hectares restoration, you know the big picture in the landscape. We always begin with the end in mind. We don't start with hectares, but we are able to collect, collect the small hectares to the bigger picture. I hope na ko ang concept na yan. Whenever you start something, you start with the goal in mind. Begin with the end in mind. Ano ba big picture? Do we want to ensure that the ecosystem goods and services are sustained? Ano yung mga ages na yun? Ay, wala. Ah, na wala? Ah, na wala yung battery. Ah, Whatever, anong priorities nyo 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 last year? So, kanina Jennifer, sinabi ko kung para kibang batis, gusto ko lang ipigil kayo ng information. This landscape has a set of comparative advantage. Itong mga, when you identify comparative advantage, ito lang mga posible eh. Ang bang existing ANR assets nito talaga na sabi nyo, ito ako. Hindi ito, maliwana ang kanyang ANR asset, diba? Under ground. Kung Brooks Point, maybe agriculture. Masa pang mga wagang basic ground. Batarasa, maybe sabi nyo, mataas yung aking mineral reserve at sala agriculture. Okay, so ganun din. So, market location is also critical. Maganda na ang location mo, kaso na it will, you, it will take you several days to bring your product to the market. Good luck. Wala kayong advantage sa ganun. Malapit kayo sa highway, sa airports, peninsular landscape, this is closer to typhoons, etc. So, hindi takot magbiyay ang mga baro ko sa inyo. It can also be based on other climatic foundations, no? like Quezon and Sabangasal, very ideal for high value crops. Pati San Vicente at sa Minadana sa Bidito, na medyo banana, no? yung mga kawain pa kami ng duha yan. Uh, I think Pro has some area na yan. Maganda lang for climatic condition. You know, more than Palawan has an advantage for asoy. Cashew, di ba? Kaso lang, Palawan, which has been known for cashew production, has not really emerged as a major producer of cashew. Because they will, hindi talaga lumabas eh. There was not enough support. Kung talaga kung bakit ipagbanday siya ang production ng cashew, investment from seedlings to training to research, masok siya. If you go to Mindanao, ha? Ako, taga Mindanao ako, kung okay? ayaw. Or you became from the north. When you were in the Davao, in South Cotabato, back, in South Cotabato, Davao, in 1990s, wala kang mabili halos po yan sa Jensen. Ang bibila mo namang na doon yan, Davao, Pinapawan, Makilala. Ngayon, what do they have? Ang supplier ngayon doon yan sa Southern Philippines, Yung area na yan. Bakit? 
na hindi tinira yung banyo na there was one governor I'm not going to name the name kasi hindi political who really supported the development and plantation of my banyo crops diversified hindi niya ang my banyo crops hindi secretary if you look at saan ko tabago na ang main quality ano ano Pinya, 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 pinya. Pala, pala, pala. Mais, mais, mais. If you order right now, we have an emerging high value crops, diversified crops. Tourism, agriculture, farm tourism, agriculture, and so on. So, because we know the value, alam niya yung climatic condition, very ideal or certain kinds of high-value crops. Dapat alam nyo kung ano yun. So if you are Quezon Rizal, can you imagine if those two LGUs can produce 200 hectares of durian, mangustin, gansones, rambutan, all the high-value fruit trees, you can supply the whole of the Galo-Galo, di ba? Saan ang Galo na yan yun? Bravo. But it needs investment on the part of the local government, on the part of the DNR, on the part of the private sector. I worked in Vietnam for almost full time out on two years as a part time of 2013. One of the things that I learned when I was in Vietnam was very simple. They were totally devastated by the war. Alam naman nyo yun, di ba? From a land cover of 18%, now we have about more than 40%. Mostly, plantations, high value crops, pepinyal. If you go to the central Vietnam, it is a small holder production area for coffee, for Bosta. They are now the biggest producer of robusta coffee worldwide. Tinapunok na ako sa nakaka na tinalon nila ang Brazil. Small holder lang lahat yan. Because the government allowed his holder of retainer to borrow money for a million dollars to develop our forest and the farm. And they're coming to class it all. Sa atin, wala. Punta ka sa bangko, sabi ng sige, pinita mo nila ng pera. Dapat na may positive na pa yung sa atin. So, it's really intentional alam mo where you are good at. For sure. Kung maganda ka, wapo, hindi ka naman dada to press, hindi ka patapos ng high school. Kuat banget fisikalnya, makan dah. Tapi kalau di lompat deeper, nak guna kelas, kalau you are not taking advantage of that, kau bagus bagus advantage. And main pelawan is not taking advantage or is kau bagus di advantage. And I think this is the major contribution yang bawa terjadi. Art questions, apa yang kung bakit yung advantage ng bawat NGO, bawat cluster ng NGO sa isang landscape. When you don't sell it, the base is for complement. Sa halit na maglaban, o magaling ka magaling ka sa ASCA, magaling ka sa magaling ka sa ano, sa spices. Dito sa Palawan, I have said na ang laki ng potential ng black paper. We're importing black paper from Indonesia sa Palawan. Vietnam, how are we going to lose? Palawan has a big advantage for black paper, especially in South, partly in the South. Oh, the main unique natural landscape, Palawan is known for its natural and cultural landscape. Pagbuti nga, in-improve na ito sa daw kung saan na ground paper. First time kung saan na ground paper, puro lang. Puro pang ito, may kopo, may kandila kami. Yung natuto. Wala pang makain na. Buti na gagayin na pinakain ka rin sa lang ng resource. Okay. 
Dito, alam din, may link sila, hindi na kong water. Dito sa farm, dito sa Brooks Point, yan yung malalit na ng Cashman, support yung kanilang water district. You know, that's a protect wildlife. Pero ito, barangay ang magsama-sama with the IPs. Ito, region ay, ito ang pinaka-challenging namin ginawa. Buong region, ginawa namin ng, ng analysis. Ano yung presented in Coneta? If you look at Samar, very challenging. Yung pula na yun, that's a protected area. Ha? Buffer zone, nandiyan. Protected zone, nandiyan. Alienable, nandiyan. Force run, nandiyan. Maliwa na, no? That's basically the divide. Pero tignan nyo yung economic, ano yung mga economic indicators nila? May mining, may fisheries, lahat. How do you do? What is really the value that would optimize? So what really you need? Malaking challenge, nobody has solved it yet. Kung nisend namin yan sa buong region with the governors, they are NGOs. Somebody has to make a choice whether we like it or not. What kind of values are you going to put in? Kami ng DNR, biodiversity, conservation, protected area values. Kami ng mga AGM, mining, sa fisheries. Ang daming fishing grounds ito. Agad, all over summer. So, which is which? Matutong! Affected area. We use in this case in legal boundary. Pero ginawa namin, apat na water set ang matutong. Pero tignan mo yan ha, this is the water set. Ang daming ecosystem foods, ang daming mga nakikinabang sa tubig lang ha, sa tubig lang ito. Tubig. Wall of Industries, Source, the whole Philippines, Plantation, Poultry, Babuyan, Agriculture, at dami. Ang dami, ang dami makikinabang. And yet, kalbo na yung kanilang makakuto. Nobody cares. They're all dependent on water. Siguro tumigil na sila pag wala ng tubig. Maybe that's the way we are learning. We are learning to learn the value of losing. Simply by losing something. Okay. So, in the middle. Aha. Sir, that's the same moment. Ito yung ginagawa ng isang Europe na tinatapos because of my pandemic. Ah, yan. If you look at the total, there yan ang ilang 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 ilang. 243,000. Pero, 80% of the land area, policy designated land use conservation area. So, 20% na lang ang area nila ng private lands. Kaya na, nagsisipan sila doon sa, anong tawag ko doon sa, doon sa mali na pwesto na yun. Doon sa, nagsisikipan doon. Tubig, may problema sila sa tubig. So, anyway, 
Eh, kasi ayaw ko po na resolve na nila. Yan, ang dami. Nag-mapping kami ng unique attraction sa LDA. So, ang dami. With existing and non-existing no enterprises yet. From caves, you know, to cliff, to beach, to hot spring, island, lagoon, etc. all the way. 363 unique landscape, unique. Kaso lang yung iba, imposible yung mabo. Walang pansada. So, number three steps. Ano yung number one? Ano yung landscape. Number two. I-identify nyo yung inyong major ecosystems to the service, di ba? Number three, kung nakakamilya naman ito, sabi ko, where are we now? Ano yung events? Ano yung gusto nyo proteksyonan? Ano yung mga kaya nyo manipulate? Where do you want to go? Begin with the end in mind. Kung saan ka, at saan ka pupunta, magali na, di ba? Anong gagawin mo? How do you get there? Lakad ka, magiging plano. Pwede mo natin. Pwede rin. So, just put in some items that you might want to take a look. Menu of items you want to take a look. Please show on the deck. Identify ka ng indicators you want to measure over time. Of course, ang malaking challenge, kung makamit mo mayroon na kayong agreement na land use ay taas, why, why, bawat land use, at is it designated, at mag-agree, everybody buys in, the two is of the LGU, and then, pwede kang mag-enforce na support, the self-interested stakeholders. Dito yung pwede niya identify ngayon, yung inyong hectares, maraming hectares, basta they're part of the bigger system. Mamaya may pag-relecture sa water or high water discharge areas. You can start with two become critical segments. Yung mag-agree kayo kung saan nyo yan. So, yan. Of course, ang malaking challenge dito eh, bawat land use kasi may desired land cover kayo, di ba? Hello? Kung urban land use, gusto nyo mga itakoy pa, may, may, mga, may mga banta na may mga pagsada. So, and then, investment nyo, anong gusto nyo at the end of 10 years? O 9 years, kung tatlong, tatlong term yung mayor. Using the existing land cover ng Nantria. This is just to give you an idea of, you know, the total picture of landscape restoration. When we start, kung wala kang masan ng pera, protect sa lang ng remaining natural forest. Protect lang from solo, improvement, illegal logging, wildlife boxing. Diyon lang. That's already contribution to landscape restoration. Kung gusto naman nyo, pumunta ka isa, yan ang mga benefits. At yan naman ang pwede nyo gamitin. At yan ang pwede nyo gamitin. Yan ang pwede nyo sumupan. Other forestry, the manics, existing plantation, the GPLCAS, climate smart agriculture. Before, kasi nabuka namin sa wow, ito yung emerging pa lang yung konsepto ng landscape. Yung EJO sabi niya, gusto kong i-restore na ito based on ng forest land use plan. Before, 2000, I think nagupis kami doon, 2001 at 2002. Natapos ng project, I think 2010. Malaki na. Ito ba yung pakasa? Diba? Oo. So, economic analysis. Kung ito yung mga tenure, siyempre, CBFM, ano ang land cover niyan? Plantations, other forestry, protection, diba? Hello? CBFMA, IPMA, plantations, three plantations. Tag-C, combination, co-management, 
Ito yung parks, communal parks, water, communal water sites protection niya. PA, alam niyo na. So yan. Tignan niyo ha, ang direct use value, ang use value kasi yung talagang pumupunta sa pitakan. No? You know? <coughs> Mataas ang city if you're matasakit yung mga... Something man is good. Ito. Ito yung cost. Per unit. And this is how the different summary. So, I will end with that slide. Ang boses. Thank you. For listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Bernie. Do you have any questions for Dr. Bernie? Yes, sir. Sir, in consideration doon sa mga restoration initiatives, Uh, like yung mga industries na dependent lahat sa wata yung uh, slide na naipasit kanina. Hindi na mabayaan nila yung, of course, forest cover and cloud cover. Uh, hindi ko ba na makakonsider uh, natin yung PAS o no? yung Payment for Ecosystem Services para may certain amount na allocation para sa rehabilitation ng area. Okay, so we're going to do that if we don't get the end. Uh, may iba pa bang tanong? Ayan, okay. Pwede tanong bang aking ano, kahit mong pasagang boxes? Actually, kung maliwala ng last day, ang buong nga yung exercise, imamapas yung mga users. Whether within or outside their area. Kasi, tubig, yung bawa, mining, yung gusto sila sa doon. Pero yung tubig na nagaling doon sa water set, di ba? Nakikinagang sila whether underground or surface water. So, it's up to the lead agency with its one NGO, the Centro, PCSD, to gather us. Ang pinuha namin sa matutong isip. We ask the NGO, kasi mga NGOs, complete to listan na lang ng mga businesses registered. Alam nila, registered na business, alam nila. So, we ask them with the DNR, to co-sign an invitation to all users of ecosystem schools and services. Plantation ban, rest, water districts, ginagar namin sila kami na ito yung ating pinapakinabangin. Paliwanan po? At ito yung buhay ng mga Japanian. Would you like to contribute to the conservation of the area? Kung sabi nga, yes! At willingness to pay on. The brother are willing to get their own money to contribute. Saan? Mag-uusap-usap kayo. Willing din lang siya. Ma-identify yung priority areas. And then kung doon, doon yung buo sa kanyang kayamanan. Unless you know that, it will not count. So, maniwanag sa kanila, of course, you cannot impose kasi yung willing list to pay mo na kasi gusto mo nang umasok po na sila sa kwarto at kung sila sa tukin hindi yung sinasabi in other words, let them enter the willing list to pay and then as you do devaluation alam mo na then you can start looking at tightening the belt and using your policy regulation in the meantime willing list to pay pero maliwanan yung Pagkita mo sa kanila, you know what are you going to sell and they will raise their hand not because they're willing but out of moral obligation. Nakikinabang tayo, we don't want to be free riders. Alam mo, pag-ticket, tinawag kang free riders, pamit na ipay, siba? Sabi namin, promise, okay, we will advertise all the AGS users dito sa waters and itong nagkita papayag. Kamit lang ng kamit. O sila na sila. Yung image sila mo na sila. Ang ginawa na ng DNR yan, nag-aaral ako nung in-advertise sila nationwide. The 12, 30 dozens 
Oo, isa rin. Yung, nasa, yung pangalan ng isang big plantation sa Northern Mindanao na nagpinupulit na yung kagaya ng bay. Nagbaya. Nag-set up na So, first step, and that's why you have to map out na kung ano kung pinta mo ha, that time mas kinabang dito or mas benefit. Ano ang pwede niyong implement to this world? Kasi hindi lang yung LG yun, laki ng gastos. Hindi lang PNR. Ang mga community sa mga wala silang pera, labor lang, time. Mahirap lang sila, pakatapo kung pa sila, wala kang bayan, kawawa naman. Diba? Kasi getting them worse rather than better off. So, ang dami namin sa ating job number na ako sabi sa inyo. Ang daming free riders. On the way, I'm sure there's a lot of free riders. On the way, kaso lang, But do you think you can make any work? I'm sure. Oh, tayo yung nasa tayo. Kung mahilig sila na ha? Baka clear or clear as mud. Yes. Kasi 